welcome you on behalf of our platform. Uh, as I was, uh, we just had played a small video. I'll send to you separately later. So uh, Trends is a platform. This is uh, a platform for curated art, cultural, and social and literary experiences. We've been conducting a lot of uh, musical performances. We, we do a lot of theater. And uh, at the same time, during the pandemic, uh, in July, we started our literature series. And so we are so honored to have you today in our 20th author interaction. And uh, with me is my co-host, uh, Shreya. She is a poetess and she is also an architecture student as well as a Kathak dancer. And uh, I would really like to give a little uh, brief introduction, though everyone knows about you. Uh, today, uh, as I said, it's a privilege to welcome Dr. Vinay Sahasra Pudhe, our illustrious author of today. Vinay ji is a nationalist social worker by heart. He's a respected member of parliament, Rajya Sabha. He's the president of the prestigious national body, ICCR, which is the Indian Council for Cultural Relations and chairman of the parliamentary standing committee for human resource development. He's also a postgraduate in English literature He's a PhD in uh, political science. He has formerly served as the national vice president of the world's largest political party, BJP, and also he's the president of ISRN. As an author, he's written multiple books. He's written around nine books. Among them, I would name a few, uh, Beyond a Billion Ballots, which is a very popular Sangharthan Shastra, Eka Ki Purvanchal, Karikarta Manorachna, Innovation Republic among others. Sir, this is quite an achievement and I really must applaud you for your various achievements. So, yes. Thank you, sir. Sir, uh, normally we start with our conversation. We'd like to have a few words from you before we start our conversation. Well, uh, first of all, let me thank the um, team of this particular platform, uh, Neetaji, Shreyaji and all others. Uh, I mean, uh, I'm a public person in a way, but uh, to describe myself as an author, perhaps would be an overstatement, writing a couple of books or uh, maybe editing a couple of more books is not something which uh, qualifies you to call yourself as an author. So frankly speaking, I'm a little embarrassed uh, to be here amongst uh, uh, various uh, literary uh, enthusiast kind of who would like to know and meet with uh, authors who are into creative writing because my writings are basically uh, policy related or uh, maybe uh, themes and issues which are uh, less about creativity but more about uh, maybe journalistic writing or research based writing and things like that. But still uh, you were uh, generous enough to invite me over here and therefore it's an honor and uh, for anybody who may be writing a small monograph or maybe a voluminous uh, kind of writings add to his credit, uh, for any such person, when readers interact with him or people who are interested in his writings, they want to have some discussion with him. That is definitely a matter of uh, great satisfaction and pleasure as well. And therefore, uh, I'm happy to interact with you. Uh, uh, but as I said, uh, uh, my writings are of a different uh, kind. And I don't know whether uh, people who are interested in creative writings and creative writers would be equally keen on interacting with someone like me. Nonetheless, uh, you have invited me. And I'm sure uh, this is a uh, internet I mean, Zoom platform, and uh, I am seeing some people around. So, whatever the uh, interaction uh, that you desire, I am here to answer the questions and uh, respond to the curiosities in the minds of people. Thank you, sir. Thank you. And you're so humble, um, I would say. But, sir, we will really be keen to know about your journey. I mean, you are a nationalist social worker by heart. So, about your journey, and how do you, you know, progress to be achieving your goals one step at a time and so persistently? You've been doing a lot of things and you're at the helm of ICCR right now. So what has your journey been? We'd like to know that. Well, uh, it's not very exceptionally different from many who are into 
kind of public life, if I may say so. I mean, you have normally those who are in the public life uh, have their uh, uh, world view and also their individual aspirations shaped during their basically college days. And that is what happened in my case as well. I, when I was a college student, the nation uh, faced uh, the draconian rule of emergency. And uh, many like me offered Satyagraha for uh, saving our democracy, democratic traditions. And uh, many like me were put behind the bar. So I also had uh, uh, for about 45 days uh, experience of remaining in jail along with uh, other Satyagrahis. And that way, in a way, I mean, that occasion in a way brought me in a more uh, resolute manner in public affairs for that matter. I became a student activist. Then I was a member of Senate of the Mumbai University. I was on the management council. I was associated with the Akhil Bharatiya Vidyarthi Parishad, the ABBP. Uh, I also had a brush with uh, Northeast India because of the students' experience in interstate living project of the ABVP, which is a one of its kind scheme for cultural exchange and evolving emotional connectivity with uh, different provinces of our far-flung country, especially the border areas, uh, which are otherwise uh, seen as vulnerable. Uh, and thereafter, I was into media also for a while. Uh, I was a journalist. I was a public relations officer. And last, uh, I mean, before I became a member of parliament, prior to that, for several years, at least more than two and a half decades, I was associated with an institution which uh, uh, is a unique institution which uh, works for the capacity building of elected representatives. Because in a democracy, to get elected is also very, very difficult. But comparatively, getting elected is easier than actual uh, being in the governance uh, structure as such. Because to govern requires a whole lot of qualities, including uh, management qualities, including creative qualities, decision making, and so on and so forth. And these qualities to be nurtured, you require to have some training. Uh, training into skills, training into motivation, training into understanding of issues, and all these things we provide under that institution, which is based out of Mumbai. And uh, thereafter, uh, last uh, about 10 years, I'm more active in politics. I was the in charge of the training department of the BJP. And uh, since between 2014 until recently, I was the vice president, the national vice president. And uh, in that capacity, handling various portfolios. That's so I must really uh, compliment you on your very, very <laughs> dynamic journey. In fact, uh, as well as our uh, forum is concerned, sir, it's not only about creative writing. It is, uh, you know, we try to do the story behind the story. So you're absolutely, I'll go back to what you said in the beginning, you're absolutely suited for a forum because we like to delve into the story and, you know, who better than you with your dynamic story with us today. You know, a lot of people who have joined today would definitely relate to you. And we must thank you for the service that you've done so far for our country. Thank you. Uh, Vineji, you've been a student leader, turn, turn thinker, turned writer, and finally a politician. Besides, of course, being at the helm of uh, ICCR. So what, what role do you think you've enjoyed the most? Well, uh, I mean, these roles... Uh came to me or the responsibilities came to me at a particular stage in my life. And therefore, uh, when I was a student leader, naturally being in the, a student activist rather, being in the management and uh, decision-making bodies of the university uh, was something uh, very critical for us because whatever the transformations we sought as student activists, we were able to a certain extent to give some shape to them. Likewise, uh, when I headed the uh, Institute uh, for the training of elected representatives, that was also very exciting. And normally we have a particular approach to look at the politicians. And uh, before Mr. Modi uh, took over, I think in India, 
ridiculing a politician was a favorite pastime and people used to consider that politicians are the worthless creatures and they don't know anything and they are ignorant and they are only uh, coming through all kinds of wrong uh, practices uh, implemented while getting elected and so on and so forth but in politics also like in society there are good people there are bad people and uh, we need to nurture those who are good we need to encourage them those who are uh, bringing some value addition with them for the society and for the governance as well so that was also very exciting and when uh, we realized that many politicians at the end of the training used to come and tell us that please keep on conducting such programs if you do so then only we may be able to remain on the track otherwise uh, we may go berserk or we may go off track as well so this kind of a mentoring is required for each one and every one it doesn't have anything to do with your age even at the age of maybe 70 75 80 people require a mentor and uh, that is something which uh, perhaps in a training kind of a setup you can achieve in a collective manner it's a mutual mentoring as well in a way because the atmosphere creates some impact in that sense now that last 3 years i am heading the indian uh, council for cultural relations it's a different ball game altogether but one issue which should uh, perhaps concern each one of us is how exactly india is being perceived by the world and that global perception about india requires uh, cultivation at times requires some correction also and it is for all of us to do that it is not that the government alone can take care of it our nri is our our ambassadors if they play that role and therefore we are now at the iccr trying to rope in several nri community members at various places we are seeking their help we are also engaging with them and we are trying to create a proper understanding about the idea of india and india as such as a country as a civilization as people amongst the global community because if you uh, look at the scenario perhaps uh, in every nook and corner of the globe india enjoys a huge amount of goodwill and curiosity while this is certainly important it is not enough because this curiosity and goodwill requires to be converted into an understanding about india and india is one such country which perhaps uh, not properly understood that way and therefore uh, in that context i believe we require to work overtime uh, make deeper inroads into academia into opinion making and uh, try to evolve uh, proper understanding about india now this is a huge task it cannot happen only through cultural programs maybe classical dance classical music these are important equipments that we have but creating an understanding it's something much more and for that you have to interact with the people you have to cultivate you have to uh, undo the wrong impressions that are etched on the minds of people Uh, because of uh, maybe uh, certain persons who have uh, a negativist approach about india maybe uh, so all these uh, are definitely very exciting challenges i would say and uh, we are working on that i am i am sure we will be able to achieve some success in the days to come i am sure because uh, culture as far as that is concerned it's like a soft bar and uh, it's it's very true that global identity is a, in fact is a very very sensitive topic as well for each and every citizen and it's very interesting to learn from people like you who are uh, heading uh, such august organization that how does this work and how how it is taken up uh, in the minds of the global citizens uh, so with growing acceptance of indian culture all over the world we know how it is our dances our music our theater these are all soft parts so what specific plans do you have as iccr in promoting i know you have various plans but you know a lot of artists are here today in the room a lot of nationally acclaimed theater artists musicians they are there to they want to listen from you what are the specific plans of iccr in the coming years or maybe in the times of pandemic today well i think uh, firstly we would like to 
in a way encourage all those who are engaged in the efforts for making india a global hub for education iccr provides scholarships to close to 3500 students every year and at any given time we have some 6000 foreign students studying and our fellowships and scholarships here now we do take care of them but it is again for the institutions universities colleges and students as well to take every care of the foreign students who are coming over here how long are we going to listen to the stories about un sang and fahiyan and alberuni why can't we cultivate new alberunis for that matter and there are many countries heads of states of whom have studied in india take example of bangladesh or sri lanka or afghanistan they are the alumni of indian institutions now we have decided to cultivate uh, these relationships we want many more students to come over here for that with the help of the ministry of education we have laid out a plan of action it is currently under discussion and we are sure we can move into that direction in a big way uh, not only normal uh, academic courses but our traditional indian knowledge systems also are attracting the global community in a huge way people are in interested in knowing about rangoli say for example or mehndi or indian culinary and cuisines or indian weddings just take a simple uh, uh, family ceremony of indian weddings it's a big event and there are, it's a very colorful event and people can come i mean uh, i don't know whether somebody might be thinking about like we have health tourism why there could not be a wedding tourism there could be right. and Agreed. already people are coming here and uh, yeah. getting into wedlocks maybe uh, yet uh, once more i mean they are already married but they come over here and try to test the indian uh, wedding system as well so there are number of things which we can really do with a little uh, application of mind some kind of a plan about it and some creative thinking that should go behind it our artisans recently we conducted a international seminar which was suitably titled as weaving relations textile traditions yes. now textile in the entire southeast asia and middle east as well there are uh, traditions of uh, textile uh, which are equally exciting for indians and indian traditions are also kind of welcomed by them all now we brought all the master weavers here i mean of course it happened only virtually but then all of them were interested they came together they discussed how can we have the design exchange the technology exchange the accessibility to each other's markets and so on and so forth so artisans were never on the agenda of iccr we brought them movies for example i mean such a huge uh, draw that we have for indian movies in practically every other uh, part of the globe but then we need to create proper subtitling mechanism i had been to kazakhstan and the kazakh people told me that we are uh, i mean uh, we are fans of bollywood movies but unfortunately we are served movies with russian subtitles we want kazakh subtitles now do we have uh, people who know kazakh language do we have people who know the bhasha indonesia for that matter so we need uh, we, we should not unduly getting lured only by i may be mandarin or japanese or german or spanish these are important languages but it equally important are these languages as well so i think uh, the agenda is extremely huge and uh, all of us need to pitch in and try to contribute in this uh, mission of creating understanding about india in that context uh, we have unveiled a whole plan of promoting india and making india uh, a country about which uh, people are i mean global community is more enlightened than what it is today absolutely coming back to writing i'm sure we'll all look forward to your writing a book on indian culture with your kind of experience everyone should benefit from that and i hope you have uh, your planning already so uh, have you got any plan to write a book on indian no, culture and tradition see indian culture again it's such a uh, huge subject with so many facets of it and one person uh, who mm -hmm. writes about say ramayana and mahabharat and the same person writes about our culinary and cuisines 
it's mm -hmm. something very, very difficult, unimaginable. So what we have done with the help of the Indira Gandhi National Center for Arts, ICCR and IG and CA have come together. I myself and Dr. Sachidanand Joshi, we have taken the role of being the editors of an anthology, which will be about India at super soft power, if I may describe that way. And we are going to have chapters, say, for example, Amish Tripathi is going to write a chapter on Indian epics. Arif Mohammad Khan, the governor of Kerala, is going to write a chapter on India's history. And there are people who are going to write about India, the universal heroes that India has produced. Like, for example, uh, Mahatma Gandhi, Rabindranath Tagore, Swami Vivekanand, Gautam Buddha, Guru Nanak. All these are uh, universal heroes which India has produced. And we need to uh, talk about uh, them to the global community. We will have chapters on Indian dances, Indian movies, Indian music, Indian uh, crafts and uh, artisans, Indian uh, tribal and folk uh, cultures, uh, so on and so forth, including, of course, our traditional Indian knowledge systems, including, say, Vedic mathematics, for example, or Sanskrit or Indology. All these things we are taking care of in this uh, anthology. And since many towering personalities have agreed to write, uh, our task of bringing all of them together and uh, having chapters written by them, it's not so very easy because uh, uh, they are short on time and uh, we are working towards that. But I'm sure uh, in another uh, maybe four or five months, we will be completing that particular assignment. That's a very interesting thought because anthologies, after all, I mean, I'll be really looking forward to this. Incidentally, Amish was also one of our guests on this platform. He was our 14th guest. And that's so very interesting no, to know that he's also going to be there in the anthology. And we really look forward to it. And I'm sure, sir, we'll call you back again when that anthology is launched. And we'd like to also uh, go through it and everything. See, your book, uh, Beyond a Billion Ballots, democratic uh, reforms for a resurgent India gives a broad view about democracy and how it is practiced in India. And it does give an all inclusive analysis of the subject. So what made you write this book? And how do you think and why do you think it is important to read in today's context? See what happens at, uh, at the popular level, I'm saying that yes. the understanding of Indian democracy is not so very profound. Many times we mistake democracy and equate it only to voting and elections. While voting and elections are an important part of democracy, simply to have a chance to vote and elect your representative doesn't mean that you are a democracy. Democracy is all about the democratic values as well and practices. And it is not only in uh, so far as governance is concerned that democracy is critical. Of course, it is important, but you, all, of course, have to have a democratic approach. And the uh, beauty about India is that Indian political democracy hinges upon our democratic traditions in our spirituality. We are essentially first a spiritual democracy. Now we are, of course, a political democracy as well. And we are moving towards as envisioned by persons like Dr. Baba Sahib Ambedkar towards social and economic democracy. So all these things we have to achieve, but our foundation is very deep because essentially we are a spiritual democracy. In our country, never we believed in, in a theocratic kind of a state. We always said, Ekam Sat Vipra Bahuda Vadanti. We allowed everybody to practice his own way of worship. And therefore, this is something very, very important about India. Now, the reason why I wrote this book was that uh, See, people uh, many a times cast their vote and then forget for five years. This is not the way you can be a citizen in a democracy, in a responsible citizen. For that, you have to be watchful about the political parties, their functionality, their ideology, their uh, uh, policy perspectives, and then you have to select. See, you have democracy means, after all, the element of choice. Good evening, sir. Uh, very, yeah, yeah. Nice, very nice to catch up with you, sir, and uh, what a to all your uh, entire uh, pen work as well as entire life story. It's really inspiring to us, and the way you are making it. Sense. And uh, with the entire team, uh, really inspirational, sir. Uh, 
I was looking at the list of your uh, uh, works, sir. So way back in 1988, you penned down a book in Marathi, which also happens to be my mother tongue, uh, about Ekaki Purvanchal. And uh, presently, right now I'm attending from Assam. I happen to be serving in Assam for the last 10 years, and then uh, I'm simply in love with the culture of these people and also. So we are uh, uh, waiting for the next edition of this book because it is uh, 1988, and uh, I'm sure a lot of water has flown through Brahma Putra, sir. And uh, your thoughts on that? No, no, you are absolutely right. I mean, uh, that was uh, written when I was not even 30 year old. So naturally, it was more uh, kind of an amateurish approach. But of course, I had travelled uh, in the entire length and breadth of Northeast India, the beautiful land of uh, our Northeast, and alop alop akhomia ahiyase. Great. But then, uh, to understand Northeast, uh, it takes uh, a huge amount of efforts. and uh, you have to criss cross the entire hilly terrain the green valleys and blue hills of uh, the northeast india but unfortunately what has happened that in uh, most parts of uh, india uh, people are there at very high positions but unfortunately and i am extremely sad in saying so that people don't know and they don't know that they don't know that is the tragedy of the whole and therefore in fact i have mooted the idea that like we have in universities area studies departments and we study about say uh, middle east or uh, maybe eurasia or maybe southeast asia but in fact we need to study about our own country about the northeast india there are many people who continue to believe that manipur is a city like nagpur or jabalpur which it which it is not so this literacy and prime minister has come out with a very brilliant idea which is ek bharat shreshth bharat where in this uh, emotional integration through some experiential understanding of each other uh, i mean uh, for each one uh, for the other provinces it's something uh, which is the basis which is the core of the idea of ek bharat shreshth bharat it is currently being implemented by the ministry of education uh, but i believe uh, it should become a movement if we really have to do that and of course things are changing the way prime minister vajpai conceived the idea of a donor ministry and uh, now there is a great emphasis on that and northeastern students are uh, perhaps in a better position today than what they were 10 years back but still i believe it is not a finished agenda we have to work uh, more to have that emotional integration actually uh, becoming a part of our experience right sir but your idea of uh, coming out with another edition of this book is very very relevant i would suggest uh, very talented uh, people of your kind who have more first hand experience of years together should come together and contribute chapters i will be happy to edit that anthology yes. okay, really most uh, happy to contribute in any way sir i know there is one uh, another police officer uh, mr thube who is yes. there in uh, and he is also from maharashtra and he can write i'm sure people like you can contribute but it's very nice to get introduced to you to meet with you and to converse with you. same yes sir thank you so much dr ganpur to join us it is absolutely a pre- uh, pleasure and privilege to have you with us today i like to welcome atul ji and in fact mr atul kulkarni is instrumental in having this session together today in fact he is the person who is so passionate about northeast as uh, when he knows he is on the board of directors of uh, i am shillong welcome atul ji namaskar vinay ji yeah no me no no stay with me me i think the the uh, my question would be about the book uh, beyond billion ba- ballad i mean uh, you you talked about uh, the democracy the rights and also about the uh, various uh, responsibilities as an indi- individual but then how do we overcome this challenge that the political parties also need to keep in mind for them to get elected uh, we need to cultivate and create this ecosystem which actually overcomes these hurdles that we have Isn't it the other way around that the political parties also need to uh, take some uh, initiative to ensure that uh, uh, the the uh, pressure groups that you face 
during the electoral challenge because again uh, as you rightly said that for a voter uh, his job is not over once he votes uh, every 5 years uh, but for a political party also it is equally important that they don't look at uh, winability as the only criteria well, you are and absolutely you are right and i cannot agree with you more in fact in my book uh, whatever the reforms that i have tried to suggest one of them is fundamental reforms in the way we run our political parties uh, in our country there are close to 1700 political parties of which at least 50 political parties have got some chance to get some mandate here and there maybe in jilla parishads or in municipal councils or in uh, legislative assemblies and parliament of these 50 parties i mean uh, who are seriously uh, conducting their businesses comparatively Uh, more than 40 parties are dynasty based parties so what kind of internal democracy you can think about so political parties require some kind of a comprehensive legislation to govern them we don't have any legislation a small country like finland for example they have a act which governs the internal affairs of political parties we don't have the venkatachalaya commission which was appointed during mr vajpayee's prime ministership uh, which was there to uh, review the implementation of indian constitution has given uh, a whole lot of suggestions and uh, recommended reforms even if we accept those reforms and implement them i think it will be uh, a revolution kind of because political parties are key to the functioning of democracy the quality of democracy as well and if parties are not uh, bringing any quality to the table any value to the table then uh, to expect that parties that are otherwise bankrupt i mean quality in the context of quality i am speaking or the human resources that they have or the way they are uh, conducting their uh, policy formulations if at all there is anything most of the political parties are de ideologized there is no ideology behind them so if so such, basically act as a pressure group correct so if such political parties continue to seek mandate and if our people are ready to give them the mandate uh, i think uh, you don't require a fortune teller to uh, predict what kind of uh, governance you will have okay thank you thank, thank you. you atul ji for joining in and for your continuous support always to this platform thank you uh, now we have uh, mercy tetsu vinayji matsi tetsu she is a member of nagaland's very famous folk group uh, tetsu sisters she is impaneled with iccr in fact she is one of the few individuals who has put northeast india and nagaland in the right light and she showcases the region's uniqueness to the rest of the country mercy very good evening and thank you for this opportunity dr vinay uh, my question is in relation to your position at iccr and uh yeah we know the north is has been gaining a lot of attention in the last couple of years we've been getting lots of opportunities we are also in panel with iccr but we are still looking at more inclusion when it comes to events that happens outside the country and even within the country we do have an iccr regional center in shillong but now that uh we're going to face a new normal can we artists in the nor it is look forward to more inclusion in events that happens outside the country where we'll get more representation and also if you have any advice for how we can also bridge that gap as artists from the north is thank you uh, first of all I, i i i certainly see a point in uh, what you are suggesting and we have brought in some reforms for example it so happens that uh, if there is an ambassador say in switzerland or in norway or maybe in ghana or tanzania the ambassador suggests that here in the local people these uh, dance varieties from india are extremely popular say bhangra or bharatanatyam or things like that and therefore send us yeah. the groups which are performing these dances which is okay mm-hmm. and then accordingly we try and uh, select some of the groups from the impaneled groups and send them uh, the videos and everything and then they hand pick and those groups are sent but then that uh, system had some kind of an element of injustice inbuilt in it because 
if popularity is the only criteria then dancers from chatisgarh from nagaland from arunachal will be not able to make it over there so now we yeah. have told them that the ambassadors cannot dictate ambassadors okay. can tell us their preferences but we are here to do justice to all provinces indian culture doesn't mean only bharatanatyam or garba or bhangra indian culture very much means all the dances that we see very colorful dances beautiful performances whether of arunachal mizoram nagaland manipur or all over the states in the northeast india and therefore Absolutely. this has to go places and therefore now we have uh, made it mandatory that uh, folk culture folk dances and uh, our folk artists also should be able to go abroad and showcase their talent as a part of uh, indian culture i would uh, That's wonderful, you know? I, I, i would suggest that our friends brothers and sisters in nagaland manipur mizoram and all the states in northeast india should be more uh, aggressively interacting with uh, iccr because absolutely whenever you come to delhi do meet our uh, officials our director general maybe the president of iccr and all others so that it is impressed upon them that uh, northeast has to be on their agenda thank you so much sir we'll take that to heart surely we'll take your advice into that thank, thank you, you. thank you mercy mm -hmm. for joining in from nagaland now we thank have you, vinay ji now we have uh, vandana ji she is a ex senior government official she is retired as managing director of center for railway information systems hello vandana ji namaskar dr ji i hope you can hear me yeah yeah actually so very interesting to note that uh, you know your the plans you have for expanding indian culture knowledge and information on the world across i have two small questions and they are basically concerned with you know the, your nearness to the powers that be that uh, uh, no no it's not a political question at all i just want to ask you by when will our children uh, be taught our correct history rather than the bias history which they are being taught so far and secondly sir i mean even uh, jay shankar ji our honorable minister of external affairs has written in his book that he was inspired by Ma mahabharat and today we read that even barack obama has written that he was reading ramayan and he was listening to ramayan and mahabharat so there are many events in these epics that give inspirational life teaching you know lessons to the children so if these could be included in the books for children i think it that would be really um, good for our uh, educating our children in the future they are the people who are going to lead us in the future so these are my two questions how can you help in this and when do you intend changing our history well uh, as a chairman of the parliamentary standing committee on education this subject is very much on our agenda uh, and uh, sooner than later we will have the books prepared by the ncert and several such governmental organizations including the state uh, textbook bureaus will be scanned through by this committee and we will be making some strong recommendations as well so it is very much on our agenda but then as i said uh, it will take a little more time but in the meanwhile what we have done should interest you as uh, president iccr we mooted the idea of uh, scanning through the textbooks that are being taught in various countries and we were curious to know as to how india is being taught and we came across various interesting findings for example there are countries i won't be naming them who uh, teach ramayana and mahabharat there but we don't teach it here in fact i was in iran a couple of years back and the iran tehran university vice chancellor told me that we teach upanishad tell me in which indian university upanishad is being taught and i had no specific answer to be given so the bankruptcy that is our own creation kind of is huge and to clear that backlog is a task uh, which again uh, is very challenging very daunting rather but i am sure uh, the resoluteness with which our current leadership is working in spreading indian culture without being shy of it as yes. the prime minister had said once that uh, 
we don't feel uh, embarrassed in giving a copy of bhagavad gita to the uh, prime minister of japan for that matter absolutely so these are parts of our heritage there is nothing religious about it right let's tell you that when we conduct ramayan festivals in iccr last 5 years every year we have ramayan festival conducted international ramayan festival and troops come from indonesia malaysia sri lanka and all these countries where ramayan is a part of their uh, ethos and a country like brunei which is 100% islamic country they also send their troops and they say we have changed our religion but our culture is the same yeah. so i believe uh, we everybody shares the concern that you have and i'm sure sooner than later all these reforms will definitely be translated into reality thank you sir thank you sir thank you thank you vanna ji and thank you vinay ji for a very very in fact it's a very important answer to all of us this is a constant question about history and you know we have been debating this a lot of times on this platform when amish came in we have had vikram sampath joining in so all these people have we've had uh, discussions and this is really enlightening for us to know what your thoughts were on this and now i would uh, like uh, naina sagar uh, to come and uh, she is been wanting to ask you a question she is in fact a very renowned theater director and she's an actress and she's very passionate about politics and very passionate about poetry naina namaste uh, uh, dr ji uh, i had two questions uh, uh, it was very nice to know about your elaborate plans as far as uh, putting theater music on the world map how india is going to be perceived in future and uh, so when we as theater practitioners uh, uh, when we uh, talk about india to uh, the performing artists here so uh, i see there is a uh, uh, there is a lacuna as far as the indian authors the indian playwrights the classical uh, sanskrit playwrights they are not popular primarily because sometimes when i am picking up a script and i want a english translation i don't get it easily so english is a subject it's a lingua franca of the world so when we uh, when we showcase the best ambassadors of theater from india to the world if we get good english translations and if we are able to perform so that puts you know that that is how they perceive india uh and it it become it becomes our calling card then because most of the time we are actually performing shakespeare recycled in hindi in marathi in urdu in but the indian playwrights the classical playwrights have not been actually translated into our regional languages also and uh, they don't get the prominence what they deserve on the indian stage itself world stage is secondary one is that and also you talked about theater tourism you talked about uh, uh, people coming from abroad and looking uh, traversing the length, length and breadth of india through theater through the indian folk theater so what are the plans afloat to make it a reality in future uh, so are we going to have elaborate festivals to showcase it to the world what is it going to be i wanted to know from you well the role of iccr is only that of a facilitator and if uh, um, uh, there are demands uh, coming from uh, various other uh, countries for indian theater groups to be sent over there we will definitely be more than happy to do that but as i said there requires to be some uh, uh, some some greater uh, enthusiasm uh, which is uh, seen uh, from uh, global theater community and uh, to that end we have asked our uh, ambassadors and high commissioners also to work uh, to build bridges with them for example amish tripathi uh, he was referred to a uh, few minutes before mm -hmm. is our director of the nehru center in london which is an iccr unit okay. so he is working there in this direction and many other directors are also working so sooner than later i'm sure it will happen but at the same time what you say Uh, that uh, we uh, come i mean uh, there is little understanding about uh, the rich traditions that india have but this is uh, the hangover of the colonial rule and the kind of mindset that we have cultivated over here mm -hmm. for example we say 
uh, Kalidas as Shakespeare of uh, India. Yeah, which is Shakespeare sad. Shakespeare should be said, they should be described as Kalidas of uh, uh, maybe uh, English. Uh, or Stratfordshire. Yeah, they yeah. yeah. should be yeah. done that. Yeah. But that kind of mentality, which is uh, more of a defeatist or uh, uh, a, uh, a very weird uh, kind of approach towards this, I think we have to shed this approach. We have to cultivate a approach which is uh, based on uh, our culture and taking a pride about our culture. After all, identity is not all that bad. Identity tells you why to live. Mm -hmm. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Nana. Uh, we have last two questions, uh, Vineji. Uh, we have Vinita Bakshi. Uh, she's the author of 31 Miles. She's a sociologist and she's the founder of Amra Foundation and she speaks. Namaskar, sir. Am I audible, Nita? Hi, yes. Yeah. Sir, what a great honor and pleasure to be interacting here with you. And I'm extremely thankful to Nita also that uh, I was the first one to be, you know, I'm in the series. I was the first interaction began with me and then we've had uh, Amish ji uh, with whom I again interacted and uh, um, uh, sir, firstly, I really want to congratulate you the stalwart role which you played in, you know, establishing the Indian identity on the international map once again, the cultural identity of India, which was somewhere disappearing within India. Also, the, you know, the sense of pride which was missing while uh, you know going back to our roots or illustrating anything great which we've done in our past and uh, also the fact that how northeast seems so much closer in the last five years than it ever did because i'm also a huge fan of um, the weaves from northeast and the handicrafts and whole lot of other things have done my programs there. I've done my programs with ICCR. I've been extremely privileged in that sense. So, sir, my question is like um, also in the form of a suggestion. So, you know, how Sanskrit came to India first when it was acknowledged in Europe and then it found its way back to Indian schools and curriculum. Similarly, yoga first, it became very popular in US and then, you know, as Indians, we started consuming it, something coming to India via US, even though we were the birthplace of uh, yoga. So, sir, my humble request to you is uh, uh, two things, sir. Firstly, uh, you know, ICCR auditorium. So when one enters ICCR auditorium, it is like ICCR auditorium. One enters, enters with a huge expectation. So, so my request to you is to make it like, you know, some of the auditoriums which we see in Europe and US. It's a humble request. And so secondly, I would uh, request you to, you know, there are uh, many women and many men who, have begun their writing careers very late in life. And I'm one of those because one is so busy in the earlier phases of life, understanding the society, raising children and doing a whole lot of other things, you know, which are extremely valuable being a homemaker. So uh, my suggestion to you would be that whenever we do literature festivals and other festivals abroad, even the authors who are in my age group and are still debut authors who started writing at the age of maybe 48 or something, they should also be given some opportunity, not at the cost of the youth, of course not, because they are our future generations and we have a sizable youth population. But I think somewhere ICCR can play a role you know, towards the senior citizens or people who are going towards that age, that they also feel very dignified about their age and are able to be part of uh, being cultural ambassadors of their country. Thank you, sir. Good of a suggestion for action, and uh, definitely we will note it and try to work upon it. But one thing we are trying to impress upon the mind of the government and Ministry of Education yes, that we require some kind of a national council for literary translations. Yes, because yes. after 20, after 1913, Rabindranath Tagore was recognized by the Nobel uh, Award for Literature, no, Nobel Prize. But after that, more than a century, and not a single Indian literary work has been found suitable for that award. This is basically because we don't have good translators. How many of our novels and uh, maybe 
uh, our plays and other literary works get translated into global languages, whether Spanish or French or English. And there has to be some uh, effort, some concerted effort in that direction. And uh, we are trying to impress it, the need for this upon the minds of the people in the government. Thank you. I think, yeah, think it was a very, very relevant question especially on this uh, platform. So this is what we're trying to do. We are trying to really have continuous dialogues on literature. It's not only literature, anything connected with it. And uh, thanks, Vinita, to bring up this. I think this will really- Thank you. Thank you. So we have one last question and we have uh, Giriraj ji. He's a senior disciple of Urmila Nagarji uh, from Kathak Kendra. He's been really um, willing to talk to you. Uh, since he came to know about this program. Namaskar, sir. Sir, Mera question on artist of Kelly, hey, Joe, uh, ICCRK through with this home, uh, uh, teaching career, hey, Abi Covid nineteen key wages, say, Volog, uh, Wapis Age, hey, or to Jab Unka, uh, Wapis Age, to Unke, Kareka Samap, who I could Roboka. तो कि दो साल पूरे हो जाएंगे किसी का एक साल बीच में बचा हुआ है तो क्या उनका रीकंटिन्यू होगा वो हो भी सकता है जो कार्यकाल उनका री रीकंटिन्यूएशन हो भी सकता है इसके बारे में कोई यूनिफॉर्म रूल नहीं है मगर एक विषय हमने नीतिगत तरीके से अपनाया है कि आज भारतीय संस्कृति और भारतीय संस्कृति की विभिन्न विधाएं चाहे योग हो या हमारे शास्त्रीय नृत्य या शास्त्रीय संगीत हो इनके जानकार इनके अध्येता इनको पढ़ने वाले सीखने वाले ये लोग विश्व के हर कोने में उपस्थित है तो आज जरूरी नहीं है कि भरतनाट्यम सिखाने वाला कोई टोक्यो के लिए भारत से भेजा जाए यू मे गेट ए वेरी वेल सिटीजन फ्रॉम टोक्यो मे बी ए लेडी और ए ए मैन और ए वुमन हु इज वेल वर्स विद द आर्ट ऑफ भरतनाट्यम एंड ही कैन बी ए गुड टीचर ओवर देयर ही मे बी एन एनआरआई ही मे नॉट बी एन एनआरआई एज़ वेल we have many disciples of Pandit Ravi Shankar or Pandit Birju Maharaj in uh, various countries and they can very well become our uh, ambassadors and they can very well become our teachers also. So we are trying to seek participation of the NRIs and people who are already into the sadhana of Indian uh, art forms, uh, whether dance, music or any other thing. So we will keep this work जरूरी जहां पर होगी वहां पर भारत से भी हमारे जो शिक्षक हैं इन कलाओं के उनको जरूर भेजेंगे जो वापस आए हैं उनको भी पुनः भेजने के बारे में हमें कोई पाबंदी नहीं है या ऐसा नहीं कि हम उनको नहीं भेजें थैंक यू सर थैंक यू सो मच धन्यवाद थैंक यू विनय जी फॉर टेकिंग आउट सच वैल्युएबल टाइम एंड टुडे रियली एनरिच्ड विद योर एक्सपीरियंस विद योर थॉट्स एनीथिंग दैट वी हैव मिस्ड आउट एंड यू वुड लाइक टू टेल अस टुडे well, not really because uh, the conversation was very lively and people were deeply interested about, which is uh, a good thing because otherwise it becomes very mechanical and technical and formal, which I believe this was not. And therefore, I must thank you for providing this forum to me and also to those who participated very enthusiastically, uh, those who kind of tolerated me for uh, close to more than an hour or so. And those who also pose some questions, I hope I have been able to satisfy them at least partly. Thank you very much. It was wonderful. Uh, and uh, it was a memorable conversation on this platform. Thank you. Thank you. We're really honored that you're saying something like this. And uh, everyone, I think we're already getting a lot of comments and they've really loved the session. And we will, as soon as the anthology is out, so we'll request you to come back. I think maybe we can have a physical event. I need your best wishes for that as well. Yes. Thank you. Thank you so much. And thanks to Atulji also for making this event so memorable by coordinating. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Atulji. Thank, Thank you, Vinayji. It's absolutely our privilege that you agreed to come on our forum. Thank you Thank very you. much. Bye-bye.